Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is a morning market prep video for October 3rd, 2022. Well, we're beginning a new quarter, and oh my goodness, do we have lots of uncertainty in the market ahead. What does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Monday edition of the morning market prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Well, Friday, we certainly had some uncomfortableness um, going on in the market. And as you can see this morning, we've had a little bit of back and forth here. We were selling off into the evening with um, uh, Asian markets showing lots of weakness. European markets are showing weakness this morning. But boy, here this morning, we have the bulls trying to pump the pre-market up again which has served to be an awful lot of pop and drop patterns um, in the market as of lately. So let's take a look and see if we can um, gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today by looking at these technicals in the charts. Well, first off, we have a downtrend here that's pretty darn ugly here. And as you can see, we've got um, lots of price resistance above and breaking this little price support in here on Friday um, raised an awful lot of concerns going into the close on Friday. That possibility that we could bounce back up and test that resistance in here and I still think there's that possibility we're about 10 days away from earnings, the official kickoff of earnings and I think there is still that possibility uh, that we could see this market continue to chop around heading into that earnings but there are a couple of things that could uh, toss that out and we'll we'll talk about that here in just a second but as we rally back up we're going to want to remember to be thinking about those resistance levels in the chart and be watching them closely because um, well, let's just face it, our economic conditions are not improving here in the market. And unless something changes, we could continue to see those bears pushing to the downside, albeit we are very oversold in the short term and perhaps a relief rally could begin at any time. So let's take a look at our technicals here in the chart. If we were to look at our um, standard moving averages here on the weekly, well, clearly we broke the weekly 200 uh, moving average. A rally back up to there would not be that abnormal for that to occur. Um, our technicals on the daily chart, however, still very, very dismal here in the chart. And once again, a little bit of a relief rally would be pretty normal uh, from such an oversold condition but with so many uncertainties out there right now it's going to be difficult for the market to get much going you'll want to notice that the 50-day moving average has turned back lower and our 200 is going to cross down through our 500 day here uh, probably today in um, uh, our daily charts of the Dow. If we take a quick look at our SPY, very much the same situation in our SPY. We finally broke down with new lows in 2020, uh, tw excuse me, 2022, and uh, broke down and we continue to move in the downtrend here in the chart. And I'm not sure which downtrend we're trying to, going to try and use as resistance on the way back up. But um, obviously, when we broke the support on Friday, making the new low for the year, um, a rally back into here would be a fairly normal thing to be looking for here in the market. But remember, we've just got lots and lots of resistance above. And with earnings um, around the corner, don't be surprised with the way the markets are going that we start to hear more um, earnings warnings and earnings downgrades just like we saw on Apple last week. Let's take a look at our technicals here in this chart and once again 200 moving down toward that 500 day. We got a few more days here on that before that crosses down on the SPY. Notice our 50 day moving average has definitely hooked over uh, to the downside. So kind of a rough technical chart. And then that weekly, we um, are resting right there around that 200 day moving average. So we might be able to fingers crossed get a little bit of a bounce in there to um, push us back up but let's keep in mind that resistance right in there 
um, may be our next challenge point um, in the chart. If we uh, jump on over to the QQQ, QQQ also made a new low for the year, breaking that support in here. So what that means is, is any rally back, we want to be watching these downtrend resistance levels, that resistance and support in any relief rally. And remember, Again, earnings are going to um, probably raise some concerns here for traders. What comes next on these earnings reports? Technically here in this chart, we're below our 200 day moving average. So it wouldn't be an odd thing for this to bounce back up um, and at least test that resistance in the chart, hopefully breaking back through and maybe giving us a little bit of relief um, in the chart there on the weekly. Pretty ugly situation here overall, though, um, in that weekly chart. And then if we look at that daily, well, our 200 has crossed well down below that fi um, uh, 500 day. And as you can see, we certainly have hooked over the uh, 50 day moving average. So pretty pretty ugly technical chart and right now there just is no signs that the bulls are ready to fight back all that hard yet and then if we take a look at our russell boy if there's a silver lining in the market it's right here in the russell 2000 small caps are holding up better than um, our major indexes and as you can see we're trying to hold that support so we didn't make a new low here on the russell which is very interesting um, typically, this follows the Dow pretty closely, but we held support in here on the the small caps. So keep an eye on that. Um, small caps may be the first to give us clues of a recovery um, if it begins. So watch that closely here. Remember, we've got lots of resistance above as we rally back up or we continue to stay in this choppy box. We could stay in that choppy box all the way out here. <laughs> Um, to the trend just waiting on earnings to begin so keep a close eye on the Russell and then if we take a look at our VIX well our VIX doggone it our VIX continues to be a bit of a challenging um, um, indicator for us here in the market the good news is is we haven't broken above this area this is where I think <laughs> real panic would come into the market if we broke through there I think institutions would start doing heavy selling um, in that area where we get that actual capitulation um, of the market but so far um, we've been able to hold off on that but unfortunately we continue to hold on to this upside trend and certainly um, uh, the VIX being up this high in um, price means that options are very expensive um, we pay a lot more in premium on the time decay um, so kind of keep that in mind very very challenging market here and we could again just kind of chop around in this range as we wait for um, earnings to begin uh, next week Thursday next week so let's take a look at our t2122 now if there is something to give us pretty good hope that we should get a relief rally once again it's t2122 but we keep running into more and more economic data that's not helpful for us to get that relief rally and then the bears continue to pile on but down in this area that's where we start looking for that relief rally and it could occur at any time and one of the things we want to watch for is that potential that it could be very sharp when it does happen we could get that really strong reversal that comes in and that would be um, a, a nice a nice sign of a relief rally beginning but please keep in mind we can continue to break down even though we're down here in this oversold area uh, because of those data points continuing to be so bearish we can continue that uh, pain and suffering to the downside here so watch that close and then our t2108 t2108 good news here um, the the t2108 held this price support um, in in um, 
the number of stocks holding above their 40-day moving average. So we held in there. We didn't make new lows, even though the market itself made new lows. We held in here. So about 13% of the stocks holding above their 40-day, which is pretty tough to, you know, say, oh my gosh, that's awesome. That's really bullish. But um, at least we didn't break on down. So maybe there is a relief rally coming here in the very near future. And our T2107 actually did a little bit better than that. Not only did we not make a new low, we didn't break this recent low here and held in there on that T2107. So again, those small cap caps, those number of stocks holding above the, that 200 day moving average actually improved a little bit on Friday while everything was selling. So maybe, maybe there is some um, signs of relief coming here soon. Our T21, whoops. Our T2101, well, we had a little bit of a momentum shift on Friday. Even though we were selling, we started that push right back down here um, in the chart. But what was interesting is on Friday is we really didn't see all that strong of earnings or all that strong of um, volume until right at the end of the day, we got a big spike um, in um, those um that volume as institutions really seem to be selling into the close. So unfortunately, not the best of circumstances here for the market. Um, and although we're trying to bounce this morning, I would be watching carefully for that potential of just, you know, the pop and drop. We've seen so many of those recently where we, um, the pre-market pumps up and everybody jumps and rushes and then it immediately begins to sell back off. So watch that close. And let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now our economic calendar, the, the Econo Day calendar for some reason is down again. I don't know uh, they were struggling with that last week and they're down again this morning but if we take a look here we've got some fed speak in here we've got bostic speaking we've got an ism manufacturing uh, pmi number here today that'll be important we we saw uh, a pmi number on uh end of last week that put us into that negative territory so watch that and then we've got three more Fed conversations going on here for today. So watch that close. And then on the earnings calendar, we have nothing. Um, <laughs> we have some companies listed on the calendar, but not a single one confirmed for today. So there's nothing on that earnings calendar to um, provide any inspiration to those bulls or bears. However, there is a couple of things that I need to bring up. First off, I don't know if you noticed, but on Thursday, um, the FOMC called an emergency meeting for today. FOMC will be meeting today, and I'm not exactly sure what they're going to be meeting about, but one of the things when we see markets like this, you have to be running into the concern are we running into a liquidity crisis or is it possible that the banks are once again on the brink of um, some major damage here? So watch carefully for some potential news that comes out of the FOMC. If it's the banks, perhaps they, uh, they open up that discount window and really start making it favorable to push money to the banks. Um, I don't know what they pl would plan to do with a liquidity crisis, or could it be, as many people been uh, hoping for, um, could it be that the Fed capitulates and backs off on its hawkish stance? And I gotta say, that's probably my least um, likely scenario, and that's just because we had so many Fed speakers last week leaning into you know staying strong on the rates. Um, keeping those rates up. So it'll be an interesting situation going on. There's also um, kind of some things beginning to happen out there that we'll have to keep an eye on. Um, China's yuan is really in trouble here. It's been falling hard. And um, there is some motions starting to happen that there may be an organized effort to bring the dollar down. And what does that mean? Well, what the what you can do in a communist um, country like that is that you can organize your banks and say, okay, this is what we're going to do. Um, we're going to start selling the U.S. dollar, and then we're going to require the banks to buy 
the uh, wand to bring that value back up. So we'll want to be keeping an eye on this. I wouldn't rule out that possibility that we could see China start to dump US dollars um, to try and um, halt this problem that they're having with their declining wand. So watch that closely. Um, we've got a pattern here in our UUP. This is the US dollar. Nice little pullback has occurred and that's relieved some of that pressure here. But notice we're still holding in a very strong upside trend here in pattern so watch that closely if this were to start to fall then um, we could see the market um, maybe relieve some of that pressure temporarily um, as that moves up now one of the things and I'm jumping right into some stocks that could be setting up here today guys one of the things that you're gonna have to keep an eye on is if the dollar starts to fall then you could expect energy to start to move up dramatically and one of the things that's happened overnight is oil is pushing up now one of the reasons it's pushing up is because oil OPEC is signaling um, that they may be cutting uh, production so watch that closely if OPEC is going to cut production that puts pressure on this and then if we compound this with a falling dollar we could really see energy uh, prices spike now also take a look at any commodity prices food prices things like that if the dollar starts to fall if China does create some kind of action here to really sell off the dollar then we could see we could see those prices spike up so watch that carefully so how about um, if you guys could do me a favor here before I continue on with the stock setting up if you guys could do me that favor and click that uh, subscribe button if this is the first time you've seen these videos and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video and if you find these videos to be useful or helpful to your trading if you could please do me that favor and click that thumbs up button leave a brief comment on the channel that helps the channel to continue to grow and I want to say thank you so much to everyone we just went over 29,000 subscribers so thank you thank you thank you very much you guys humble me every day I truly appreciate appreciate it and then also if you could share these videos out on your social media feed it helps the channel to continue to grow as well and I do want to continue to say thank you so much to everyone who supports the channel through the buy me a coffee link you guys are truly awesome let's take a look um, once again um, at this UUP chart and just realizing how strong this is is creating currency fluctuations all over the world so we'll want to watch that there was also a change um, happening over in Britain um, where they're they're gonna forego reversing or doing a full u-turn on tax cuts um, over there um, and that may also relieve some of the pressure of the sterling and that may help pull the dollar back as well so just keep a close eye on that I think there could be some major fluctuations coming in this particularly if um, China starts an operation to sell off the dollar and then what I would do is I would take a look at maybe TLT now TLT is a, an inverse you can see it's um, it's a 20-year bond fund and the TLT um, would be um, an opportunity to take advantage of falling bond yields and let's think about that for a second if the dollar falls we're probably going to see if the dollar starts to weaken we're going to see um, institutions banks things like that start to buy up bonds and they would do that to protect themselves because the bonds are a security to to guarantee depositors and things like that so let's keep an eye on TLT if TLT were to start to break this trend that downtrend and hold you might want to start watching that for a potential upside position and I know I know this is not a conventional trade for a lot of folks they're not trading an individual stock but trust me on this sometimes when this starts to move it can move really hard and fast so watch that closely on TLT um, other places again I think let's keep an eye with oil shooting up here this morning on XLE um, we've got that energy you could start taking a look at things like um, USO if OPEC is going to
to cut production, we could see these prices in oil start to spike up. So watch that. Individual stocks, you might want to look at like something like ExxonMobil. Notice we're trying to break out from underneath that downtrend in here. Keep a close eye on those things. Other places, um, as you know, we're going to continue to see major pressure here, I think, on um, natural gas as Europe runs into winter with a very critical situation going on. And then, of course, with with the Nord Stream, you know, leaking into the ocean, uh, that doesn't make anything better here. So natural gas supplies could begin to spike back up. And again, um, not or move back down in supplies. But what you want to watch here is if the dollar weakens, if the dollar weakens, all commodity prices will tend to move higher. So watch that closely. Um, I would take a look at um, some of these alternative energy um, areas here, particularly solar. First, solar has been holding up really well. And I saw another report come out that there was um, considerable conversation that first solar still has some upside potential here even though it's rallied so much so keep an eye on that remember we've got a lot of government funding flowing toward these companies trying to pump up um, solar um, um, solar energy activity here in our economy so watch that close um, there are certainly others out there to take a look at as well other places um, you might want to start keeping an eye on some of the food stocks if the dollar starts to fall we, we could see um, food stocks perk up now this got a heavy sell-off on friday but notice we'd had this little perk up here in some of these stocks so watch some of those consumer staples some of the consumer defensive areas um, they're strong dividend payers and that's the kind of thing that people may go to if we continue in this pressure in the market we might want to be watching some of those. And then, of course, a lot of our tech stocks are extremely oversold. And we had um, NVIDIA uh, caught a, an upgrade with, I think it was JP Morgan that said that this has nearly 100% upside potential. Um, keep an eye on stocks like this. Now, when we're this sold off, one of the things you might want to think about is just picking up a small piece buy a share buy one share and then that just allows you to pay attention to the stock um, it keeps it in your portfolio you don't forget it and if this breaks the downtrend and holds a higher low then you can start adding to the position or buying up call options on that trade but right now these are still very very bearish but I think they're so bearish it's time to start watching them just a little bit for those potentials to move back to the upside take a look at Home Depot now Home Depot very interesting chart if I pull this back I made a lot of money here recently on a short trade in Home Depot but notice that price support right in there on Home Depot and we had this nice little rally up now one of the reasons that I think we're getting a bit of a spike here is um, the hurricane um, in Florida South Carolina created an awful lot of damage and um, um, I think they're uh, starting to see some perk up uh, from those in there so watch this downtrend break and that possible hold in here you might also um, keep an eye on lows trying to pick up and in other um, materials providers um, to rebuild some of the areas um, that were devastated by this hurricane so watch that close but with that guys I'm going to cut this off because it's still a very, very ch tough and challenging market. And I would really recommend you be a little bit cautious, probably trade a little bit less. Um, um, make sure that you're watching um, um, your account very, very closely because things can change so fast in a market like this. If capitulation begins, and I'm not saying it will, but if it does begin, the pressure to the downside could get substantial with forced redemptions as 401k and mutual fund folks call in and say, get me out of this. So just watch carefully for that. If we have that panic stroke that comes into the market, because that can be very painful. So with that, guys, have an awesome day. I want to wish you all the very, very best. And I'll see you right back here, bright and early, Tuesday morning. Take care, everyone.